Hi guys, this is Pete, N6QW, and we're moving on to uh, part two of our um, video on building double balance mixers. I'd like to review first the schematic diagram of the double balance mixer, and uh, essentially what we have is a tri-filler wound ferrite transformer here, which has as the input the local oscillator input. We have the four diodes, in this case 1N914s, that are arranged in a fashion of a ring modulator. Notice it's uh, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, all the way around, and that's why they call it a diode ring. And then on the output side here, we have another trifiller wound uh, double balance mixer. Um, <clears throat> the construction of the transformer and selection, transformers and selection of the diodes are what determines the critical performance of a double balance mixer. And I should mention that uh, another form of mi mixer, of course, is a single balance mixer, but the double balance mixer has the advantage so that the output here, which is either AF or IF, is comprised solely of the uh, sum of the local oscillator and RF input and the difference. Um, if you have only a single balance mixer, you may get some other mixer products here and that, that's the desirability and the beauty of the double balance mixer is that you essentially only have the sum and difference frequencies. So as mentioned, a uh, critical element here is really uh, the construction of the trifiller wound transformers and the selection of the proper diodes. I, I prepared another diagram here which shows a little more detail of the specifics of the trifiller wound transformer. We essentially have a ferrite core where there are three windings. Uh, this winding here is what I call the long red, lining, uh, uh, let long red winding because we pick a piece of wire that's longer, in this case about 10 inches long, versus these two windings which are 8 inches long. And essentially we have uh, what's called the phasing. And this is the start of this winding, this is the start of this winding, and the start of this winding. And essentially the connection point here is from the completion of the red winding, which we call the number two winding. This is the number one, one winding, and this is the number three winding. The ending of the number two winding is connected to the start of the number three winding. And what's a great aid in being able to build these transformers is to use two different colors of wire. Uh, to use a, a red and a green here that forms these two wires. And then when you put this winding uh, in conjunction with the, these two windings, you make the ends longer so you can tell later on which wire is which. <laughs> and that's the problem so many times is that you run into a situation that you do not uh, or you're not able to tell which, which winding is which and then you run into a problem and when you connect it up you don't get the performance you, uh, you so want. Um, <clears throat> a critical point here is this connection here at the end of the winding number two to the start of winding number three. Uh, typically you can just connect these two and this is a ground connection point right here. Or you can connect a 100 ohm pot. Uh, in other words this end of the pot goes here, this end of the pot goes here, and uh, the center wiper goes to ground. And what this enables you to do is do a little finer balance uh, by adjusting the variability between what may be these two windings here and what's going into the bridge circuit. And um, you would ask, why in the world would you want to do that? Well, uh, for a commercially made double balance mixer, you'll find that the manufacturing specifications are pretty exacting. Uh, you're home brewing this and they may not be as exacting and so having this balance pot uh, can make up from some of the difference of something that's not made on a manufacturing line. But there's another reason for this as well, and I want to go back to this original uh, drawing here. And what, what this does is enables you to unbalance, to unbalance the double balance mixer. And you'd say, well, why in the world would you ever want to do that? By connecting a small 39 ohm resistor either to this point here or this point here, and leaving it float, so that in normal operation, once you've achieved the balance, you're leaving this float, if you close this, either with a switch or a relay closure, what happens is it unbalances double balance mixer. And if this happens to be on the balance modulator, because that's one of the uses that you can make of this double balance mixer, either as a frequency mixer or as a, or as a double balance modulator, 
One of the things that happens is it inserts the carrier and this is really important for tune-up. If you do not have this functionality, to be able to use this arrangement for tune-up means you either have to introduce an audio tone in here, such as with an audio oscillator, you have to have one of these little pulser devices uh, which they sell and you see them on the internet, or you have to whistle into the microphone to be able to see what the output is. So to eliminate having to build a special oscillator or using a pulser, by putting this circuit in here and closing this, uh, you unbalance it, you put the carrier through the system, and you have enough carrier for tune-up. And uh, you can even make this another pot so that you can determine the amount of carrier. And as a matter of fact, you could use this arrangement for generating uh, CW, and you could determine the amount of carrier insertion by making this a variable pot. So uh, this is a worthwhile addition uh, to the double balance mixer, especially homebrew one, and uh, something that's easily done. You do nothing to this set of windings right here because they are wired together. In other words, the end of winding two is connected to the be beginning of winding one, and that's your common AF or uh, IF either output or input port. So it's only on this one here where the local oscillator connects. On the SBL1, uh, this is pins five and six. So normally five and six are connected together and they're grounded, but you could open them up and put this pot in here, and I've done this uh, quite a few times with uh, my various homebrew transceivers is to be able to unbalance the pot in the same arrangement here. So it's a, a very unique way of doing it. So okay, so how do you go about actually building uh, one of these transformers? And you'll see here there's three wires, a red and a green that are 8 inches long and a red one that's 10 inches long. So taking the uh, 8 inch long, you can see the shorter one here, the 8 inch long, and twisting that and twisting it the whole length and typically making about eight twists per inch, you do the whole length. Do the whole length where you twist it. And then on top of that, noting which way that the twist is, you take this longer piece and twist it over the top so it fits so it fits in the lands. So it fits in the lands. So it's not opposing, but it's twisted in the same direction. So ultimately when you're done, you'll have a a three wire twist with with one lead being longer and two leads being the same size. So then what you do is once you, you do this whole length, you do this whole length here, and then you feed it through this cord, this little ferrite cord, which is in uh, FT3743. You feed it through the core, and starting in this end, I typically feed it starting at this end, feeding it through this way, feeding it through and around, through and around, through and around, and this length of 8 inches and 10 inches will give you 10 turns. 10 turns on the 3743 uh, uh, core. So then once you get done uh, winding it, this is how you connect it. These longer two leads represent this lead right here. And I always pick this end here uh, as the start. So the one that I started through, putting it through this way, putting it through this way. I call this my start. And these are the phasings. So this, this phasing here is this one here. This phasing here is the red one. So I took the end of the, the, green, uh, the red wire and connected it to the start of the green wire. And that, you see this connection here. And this green wire right here is essentially this wire here. This one goes to ground. Uh, this one goes to the top of the bridge. This one goes to the bottom of the bridge. And these two are either connected to ground here or, as I have suggested, to a 100-ohm pot. Now... Make, making two of these, you simply turn this around this way, and in doing so, turning around this way, you essentially have this part, this transformer, when you build the second one, so that this is the RF input, and my thumb here is where the ground connection is. These two common wires, which is at the end of winding two and the start of winding three, that's your AF or IF input. The red wire goes to this point here, and the green wire goes to this point here. So it's uh, pretty simple uh, connections, but the trick is to wind these three windings so you get eight turns per inch and you get a nice tight winding. And when you feed it through the core, you should be very, very careful that you don't nick any of the wires because the, uh, the ferrite cores tend to have sharp edges on them. So take your time when you're putting the, the, uh, the wire bundle through. And this length that I have indicated, uh, eight inches, on the two, uh, two red and green wires that are initially twisted together and 10 inches for the longer wire will give you enough to do 10 turns and if you notice they pretty well fill the core. 
Now, uh, that's also desirable too because there should be some symmetry with regard to uh, what you do uh, with respect to winding this core. In other words, uh, the turn should be pretty well spaced. Uh, there, there should be not any big gaps between them and you should kind of pull it tight uh, against the core without nicking the wire. So that's the critical piece. So in part three, we're going to show how to connect this. In other words, this is the this is this side over here, and simply turning this around is this here. And again, this would be the ground that's in my left hand. This is the local oscillator input. This goes to the top of the bridge. The green one goes to the bottom. You see, with the color wire and the extra length, you can't get confused in what they are. This would connect here either to the ground or to the 100 ohm pot. And moving that around over to here, you have this goes to the RF input. This goes to this part of the bridge here. The green one goes to this part of the bridge here. And these two twisted wires is either AF or IF input. So um, indeed, uh, this is, it just takes a little time and a little practice. But if you follow this tutorial, and I will uh, include this diagram in the video so that you can see it up close. So this the three windings. The longer one, what I call the long red, is the 10 inch. The, the 8 inches are, uh, are red and green, they're twisted together, and you wire the end of the uh, red one to the start of the green one, and that becomes that center terminal. It's either grounded or with the one, um, 100 ohm pot. This goes to the top of the bridge, that goes to the bottom of the bridge, and this is for the LO side, and then the reverse side for the uh, RF input. So it's uh, not too difficult to, um, to, to build, just takes a little time, take, take your time, twist them, so that they're neat knee and you twist everything in the same direction. This is N6QW and I'm going to end this part of the video.